Good afternoon, everyone. In case you don't know me, my name is Peter Goodridge. I'm the pastor at uh, St John's Church, Elmswell, uh, where the Hart family come and worship each week. And on behalf of the Hart family, thank you for coming and joining us here today. Thank you also to people joining us on the live stream. I know your love and support is greatly appreciated by the family. We meet here in this place of worship in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who himself faced death for the sin and darkness of this world, but who then conquered it, and he was raised to the glory of God the Father. Grace and mercy be with you all. We've come here this afternoon together to worship God, to thank him for his love, and to remember the short existence on earth of Eve, also known affectionately as Plop. We're here to share our grief and to commend it to the eternal care of Almighty God. We're also here to comfort each other in our sadness at Eve's not being able to fully join us in this life. And we meet in the faith that death is not the end and may be faced without fear, bitterness or guilt because we look to the things that are not seen we look to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are short-lived, but the things that are unseen are eternal. So as we meet in the presence of the Lord, we look now to his everlasting arms for comfort and strength, and we have some silence. Matthew chapter 5 verse 4 says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. And 1 John 3 verse 2, Dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Let's pray together. God of all mercies, you make nothing in vain and love all that you have made. Comfort us in our grief and console us by the knowledge of your unfailing love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have not made us for darkness and death, but for life with you forever. Without you we have nothing to hope for, but with you we have nothing to fear. So speak to us now your words of eternal life. Lift us from anxiety and guilt to the light and peace of your presence, and set the glory of your love before us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A lovely psalm from the Bible, 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. We sing, the Lord's my shepherd, I will not want.
I too have got a psalm to read. Um, it's found in the middle of the Bible, Psalm chapter 139, written by King David. Um, King David had the most interesting of lives, didn't he? If you want to, don't worry about watching a reality TV show. Read chapter, uh, Samuel chapter 1 and all. 1 and 2 Samuel, and you'll find out all about King David and his life. He had a wonderful life, and that will be an encouragement to us all if we read it. But today I'm going to read from Psalm 139. For the, for the director of music, a psalm of David. O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hands upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, I'll settle on the far side of the sea. Even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. <clears throat> if I say, surely, the darkness will hide me and the light becomes night around me. Even the darkness will not be, dark, be too dark for you. The night will shine like the day. The darkness is as light to you. For you created me, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days were ordained for me, are written in your book before one of them came to being. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God, how vast is the sum of them. Where can I count them? They will outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. That's a lovely psalm, isn't it? We see God there as all-knowing, the protector God, um, insurmountably bigger than what we are. We see God as the creator God, intricate creator God and we also see God as a comforting God there don't we so that's a wonderful psalm um, I believe now we're going to have a hymn an old Sunday school hymn Jesus loves me this I know thank you John
Um, so I've been asked to read a book called The Moon is Always Round by Jonathan Gibson. And I believe Lucy and Andrew are going to help me with this. So they're going to say The Moon is Always Round nice and loudly at the right moments. Are you coming up here, are you? When I look up on a sunny day, the sky is blue and bright, and jet planes paint white lines on its canvas. When I look up on a stormy day, the sky is grey and dull, and clouds pour rain, and flash and boom with lightning and thunder. When I look up on a summer's evening, the sky is red and orange and purpley pink and the sun looks like it's falling down from the sky on fire. When I look up on a clear night, the sky is dark, and the stars twinkle and sparkle like diamonds. But the moon isn't always round. Dad said, The moon is always round. The moon is always round. Even when you can't see all of it. When Dad told me that I was getting a little sister, the moon looked like a banana. But Dad said, The moon is the moon always is round. round. When the crib was put together, the moon looked like a slice of apple. But Dad said, The moon, the moon is, always is always round. When Mummy's tummy began to look like a watermelon, the moon looked like a shriveled orange. But Dad said, the moon is always, moon's round. always round. Even when I was told that my little sister wasn't coming to live with us after all the waiting, Dad said, The moon is always, the moon round. Is always round. When my parents left in the middle of the night for the hospital, and the next morning I went off to preschool, I thought, Will the moon be round tonight? Dad said, The moon is always, the moon is always round. round. When I waited at the hospital to meet my little sister and left without her, I asked, why, Daddy? And he replied, I don't know why, but... The moon is always round. When we got home from the hospital, I looked for the moon before bed. It was a half moon. But Dad said, The, the moon, moon is always round. And when it was still just the three of us, and we went to the church to say goodbye. My dad asked me, what shape is the moon? The moon is always round. The moon is always round. We can stay up. And dad said, what does that mean? God is always good. Lucy, what does that mean? God is always good. God is always good. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Psalm 100, verse 5. Okay, we're going to listen to Always Good by Andrew Gibson.
Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise him, his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us pray. A great, how great is the God we adore. A faithful, unchangeable friend. His love is as great as his power and knows neither measure nor end. We thank you that you are good. You are always good. You do what is right in every circumstance. And we just come before you today thanking you. You know all these little ones, the little ones. You say in the Bible, you promise the little ones you will look after them. And they go, to, but they go straight to be with you. And we thank you for this. And we thank you that um, for that verse in the Bible that says, "For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life." And we thank you for this. Thank you that we, you are a good God. And you loved us so much, you sent your son to die for us. So we thank you and just pray that you'll continue in this service, we pray to your glory. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to sing Abide With Me. Okay. Yeah. <coughs>
in life, in death. O Lord, abide with me. The Lord Jesus is the lover of his people and our only sure hope. Let us ask him to deepen our faith and sustain us in this dark hour. You became a little child for our sake, sharing our human life. To you we pray, bless us and keep us, O Lord. You grew in wisdom, age and grace, and learned obedience through suffering. To you we pray, bless us and keep us, O Lord. You welcome children, promising them your kingdom. To you we pray, bless us and keep us, O Lord. You comforted those who mourned the loss of children and friends. To you we pray, bless us and keep us, O Lord. You took upon yourself the suffering and death of us all. To you we pray, bless us and keep us, O Lord. You promised to raise up those who believe in you, just as you were raised up in glory by the Father. To you we pray, bless us and keep us, O Lord. Almighty God, creator and keeper of life, we acknowledge that Eve is your child, loved since before the foundation of the world. Grant us such trust in the finished work of your Son, our Saviour, that we shall look with hope towards a full knowledge of Eve, whose earthly life we have so little shared, but who is now complete with Christ in you. Amen. O God, who brought us to birth and in whose arms we die, in our grief and shock, contain and comfort us. Embrace us with your love. Give us hope in our confusion and grace to let go into new life through Jesus Christ. Amen. O oh God, you do not willingly grieve or afflict your children. Look with pity on the suffering of this family in their loss. Sustain them in their anguish. And into the darkness of their grief bring the light of your love. Lord Jesus, we ask you to be close to the children of this family whose lives have been changed by sorrow. Give them courage to face their loss and comfort them with your unchanging love. Amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we have our next Bible readings. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was, pled was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as a wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child 
and I will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. This is the same child that was born in Bethlehem, that grew up to say these words that Shammai will read to us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. sisters and brother know her as Plop. These are names to be treasured forever in their hearts. But we know it was you who formed Eve in the womb. You knew her by name before time began. Now we commit Eve into your ever caring and gentle love. She brought the promise of joy to many lives for so short a time. Enfold her now in internal life in the name of our risen Saviour, who was born and died and lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Amen. And so, God of compassion, 
you make nothing in vain and love all you have created. We commend to you Tom and Rachel's child Eve, for whom they poured out such great love, for whom they cherished so many hopes and dreams. We had longed to welcome her among us. Grant us the assurance that she is now encircled in your arms of love and shares the resurrection life of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. On Mount Zion, the Lord will remove the pall of sorrow hanging over all nations. He will destroy death forever. He will wipe away the tears from every face. Please do sit down. I know Rachel would like to say something. Um, uh, I'm sure you all know uh, that Tom is much more gifted at public speaking than I am. Um, but it turns out that he is all heart, pun intended. Um, so you're stuck with me. Um, and it, it's funny because I do find it ironic because there have been so many times throughout our marriage that Tom has been strong for me. Um, and I know that I never said yes, but I'm certainly glad I said I do. And we wanted to take the opportunity to say thank you. Uh, thank you to our parents and our children for their patient love and support. Thank you to our wider family and friends who have shown care in so many ways. Uh, the messages, the gifts, the cards, the visits, the meals, the cakes, being here today. And um, we really appreciate you all. Uh, and I know there's people who'd like to have come today um, and I haven't been able to. Uh, but hopefully technology has worked and you've been able to share with us in some way. Thank you. Um, and thanks too to everyone who's helped here today, uh, to uh, those who have read and helped sing, um, um, and to Peter and Lisa uh, for being there for us and helping us to plan and have this memorial service. Um, Peter leading the service, doing all the admin and probably more. <laughs> uh, thank you. And thanks to, uh, to the rector and the church wardens here at St Mary's. Um, Peter's done all the communication for us, um, but we understand that he's been very accommodating and um, made doing all this very easy for us. Um, and I also wanted to say thank you to the staff that cared for us at West Suffolk Hospital. Uh, the care we received has been faultless uh, from beginning to end. Um, and the plan was that the midwife who looked after us throughout, throughout all of this would, would join us here today. She wasn't able to because of work in the end. Um, but I think that just goes to the extent of the care that they've given us. Um, so yes, we won't forget Eve. Uh, we won't forget all those who have cried with us. Uh, but to keep us looking to Jesus, we wanted to finish with some words of C.S. Lewis um, in his book, The Magician's Nephew. Tom read it to me the other night. It's a conversation that Diggory, uh, who has a very ill mother, and the lion Aslan, have shortly after the creation of the Narnian world. Digger, Diggory kept his mouth very tight shut. He had been growing more and more uncomfortable. He hoped that whatever happened, he wouldn't blub or do anything ridiculous. Son of Adam, said Aslan. Are you ready to undo the wrong that you have done to my sweet country of Narnia on the very day of its birth? Well, I don't see what I can do, said Diggory. You see, the Queen ran away and... I asked, are you ready? said the lion. Yes, said Diggory. He had had for a second some wild idea of saying... I'll try to help you if you'll promise to help my mother. But he realised in time that the lion was not at all the sort of person one could try to make bargains with. But when he had said yes, he thought of his mother 
and he thought of the great hopes he'd had and how they were all dying away. And a lump came in his throat and tears in his eyes. And he blurted out, but please, please, won't you? Can't you give me something that will cure mother? Up till then, he had been looking at the lion's great feet and the huge claws on them. Now, in his despair, he looked up at his face. What he saw surprised him as much as anything in his whole life. For the tawny face was bent down near his own and wonder of wonders, great shining tears stood in the lion's ears, eyes. There were such big, bright tears compared with Diggory's own that for a moment he felt as if the lion must really be sorrier about his mother, mother than he was himself. dispel our fears and lift us above our sorrow into the light and peace of your constant love. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at my end and at my departing. Amen. Amen. May Christ, the Good Shepherd, enfold you with love, fill you with peace, and lead you in hope to the end of your days. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let's